this is a course on introduction to probability theory and stochastic processes. This is a course on introduction to probability theory and stochastic processes. This is a undergraduate level course. In this course, uh, we are going to discuss uh, two topics. One is a uh, probability and uh, the second topic is uh, stochastic processes. Since it is undergraduate course, uh, we are going to discuss uh, probability and the stochastic processes in the introductory level. That means, uh, we can always uh, have a postgraduate course level uh, on uh, probability separately and there will be a separate course on stochastic processes. Whereas, this is an undergraduate course on uh, introduction to probability theory and uh, stochastic processes. The word uh, theory is important in this course because uh, we are going to cover some of the theoretical aspects of probability as well as uh, some uh, problems on probability as well as uh, stochastic processes. So, we are going to uh, discuss the theory part of probability as well as uh, some uh, theory part of uh, stochastic processes also in this course. The whole course is uh, divided into uh, 12 modules. Each module is roughly of uh, 3 hours uh, lectures. So, these 12 modules uh, out of, out of uh, 12 modules, uh, 8 modules we are covering for uh, probability theory and the remaining 4 models for the stochastic processes. Out of uh, uh, 8 models in uh, probability theory, we started with uh, first module of basics of probability, second module uh, we discussed the random variable, third module uh, we have uh, moments and inequalities, fourth module uh, standard distributions. So, basically the first 4 models uh, we discuss about the one dimensional random variable that is basically a sort of a very elementary level of probability. Then the fifth model uh, we started uh, with the random vectors that means uh, multidimensional random variables. Then in the sixth model we discuss the functions of uh, several random variables. In the seventh model we discuss uh, cross moments and the eighth model we discuss the limiting distributions that is a very important topic in the probability theory limiting distributions. So, with that 8 models we cover the probability theory. Then from 9th model onwards we have a stochastic process. So, there also we discuss only the introductory level that means we started the 9th model with introduction to stochastic processes in which we define definition properties some common random processes or stochastic processes and some important properties. Then in the 10th module uh, we discuss the discrete time Marco chain in detail and the 11th module we discuss the continuous time Marco chain. In the 12th module uh, we discuss the simple Markovian queuing models. Simple means uh, the underlying stochastic process is going to be a birth death process. So, we discuss uh, stochastic processes in uh, 4 models and uh, probability theory in 8 models. Let me start with the first model that is uh, basics of probability. In this model, we are going to discuss about the random experiment, then sample space, then axiomatic definition of probability and probability space in the first lecture. And the second lecture, we are going to discuss conditional probability and independent of events. And in the third lecture, 
we are going to discuss the total probability rule, multiplication rule and uh, base theorem. With that, uh, we are going to complete the first model that is called basics of probability. Let me start with the definition of a random experiment. The first definition that is called a random experiment. An experiment, an experiment is said to be random if its result cannot be determined beforehand. Whenever in any experiment a result cannot be determined beforehand, then we say that experiment is a random experiment. In the whole probability theory, we started with the random experiment. That means, uh, we have an experiment in which the results cannot be determined beforehand. We can think of uh, many examples. Over the course, we are going to discuss uh, one by one examples. Therefore, uh, I am going to give the examples a little later. The next definition sample space. The set omega of all possible results of a random experiment. is called a yeah, sample space. The sample space is nothing but the collection of uh, all possible results or outcome of a random experiment. That means, uh, we have a random experiment in which uh, the results cannot be determined beforehand if you are able to collect all possible outcomes of a random experiment, that collection or that set of all possible results that is going to be called it as a sample space. Each possible outcome that is called a sample, either possible results or possible outcomes one and the same. So, each possible outcome or each possible result that is going to be called it as a sample and the collection of all possible results or all possible outcomes that is going to be called it as a sample space. Since we have a random experiment of many kind, the set could be consisting of a finite number of elements or it could be countably infinite number of elements in it or it could be uncountably many elements. The set omega may consisting of finite elements or countably infinite number of elements or uncountably many elements. Not only that, those elements could be numerals or non-numerals. You may have uh, some uh, random experiment in your mind. All possible outcomes or results of a random experiment, if you make a collection, that collection could be numbers or uh, it could be non numbers. Similarly, it could be finite or countably infinite or uncountably many elements. So, I will go for a few examples uh, for the sample space.
example 1. The easiest example, the random experiment, I use the notation E for random experiment. Random experiment is the, suppose you have a very simplest example, tossing a coin. Tossing a coin, that is a random experiment. The set of all possible outcomes in this random experiment is going to be, I use the notation H for if I get a head. I use the notation H for obtaining head. Similarly, I use the notation capital T for getting a tail. That means, the, the only two possible outcomes are head or tail. So, this is the collection of all possible outcomes in this random experiment. Let us go for another example. The random experiment is rolling a dice. Here, the all possible outcomes, I show the each side that uh, number, it is a number which I am going to get uh, either the number 1 or I am going to get the number 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. These are all the possible outcomes. In the dice, whenever you roll, the possible outcomes are going to be either uh, 1 or 2 or 3, 4 or 5 or 6. These are all the possible outcomes. So, the omega consisting of all possible outcomes that all is very important. You should collect, you should make a set consisting of all possible outcomes. So, first one has only two elements whereas, the second one has six elements. Third example, random experiment is a number of calls, telephone calls ongoing in a particular in a particular telephone exchange number of ongoing calls calls ongoing or ongoing calls in a telephone exchange the omega all possible outcomes. There is a possibility no calls or there is a possibility only one call or there is a possibility two calls and so on. Even though it may be a finite number of calls, so I am just putting a dot 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 that means it is a huge number. So, it could be 1000 or it could be 2000 or whatever be the number. So, I am just writing a 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, so many calls are going. This is going to be all possible outcomes of a, this random experiment. It could be finite also. So, this is going to be the collection, collection or set. So, you see the first example, it is not a numbers. Whereas, the second example, we have a numerals. Third example, we have a numerals. So, the way you have a random experiment, the collection of all possible outcomes could be numerals or non-numerals and the collection could be finite number of elements or countably infinite number of elements or uncountably many elements also. Suppose, I, I give a fourth example in which the random experiment is a temperature temperature of a particular city. In this random experiment, the omega is going to be, the temperature can vary from uh, some range. For example, uh, it may range from a collection of uh, E x such that in that particular city, the temperature is uh, most of the times uh, lies between 0 to 50 degree 
centigrade. Suppose I make the assumption and the temperature is always goes from 0 to 50. So, the omega is going to be a collection of uh, values lies between 0 to 50. So, it is a real number. Therefore, uh, the elements of omega is uncountably many between the interval 0 to 50 degree. 50 degree centigrade. I have given the example in which it is going to be numerals or non numerals. Similarly, it could be finite or countably infinite or uncountably many elements also. Now, we will move into the next definition that is called a sigma field or there is another name called a sigma algebra. A collection, a collection that is denoted by f of subsets of omega that is called a sigma field over omega either you can use over omega or on omega. The omega is a non-empty set okay. such that the omega is belonging to f second one. If a is belonging to f then a complement that is also belonging to f a collection f of subsets of omega is called a sigma field over uh, omega or uh, on omega whenever it satisfies uh, these three conditions. The first condition is omega belonging to f. If a belonging to f then a cap a complement is also belonging to f. The third condition if uh, a 1, a 2 and so on that is belonging to f then the countable union i belonging to 1 to infinity that is also belonging to f. Whether you take a finite elements in the f or countably infinite elements in the f, the union of those elements also belonging to f. If uh, any collection f of subsets of omega satisfying uh, these three conditions, then we call uh, that collection is called a sigma field on omega. So, omega has to be a non empty set then satisfies these three collect these three conditions of a collection of the subsets of omega then it is called a sigma field or sigma algebra. This is going to be a very important to define a probability. Let me give us some examples for the sigma field then we will go to the definition of a probability. Now onwards uh, I won't discuss uh, the random experiment I will start with the sample space. Suppose the sample space is uh, the same example head tail we can create the sigma field or sigma algebra on omega that is f empty set this is empty set singleton element h tail and omega. You can uh, verify whether uh, all three conditions of the sigma field is satisfied. Empty set is a uh, one element complement is a whole set both are belonging to f. The third condition if I take a few elements union is also belonging to the same f. Suppose if I take a h as well as a empty set union is going to be again h that is also belonging. If I take a tail and the omega the union is going to be omega and if I take a head and a tail union then that union is going to be omega that is also belonging that is the third condition. Second condition 
if I take any one element, the complement is also belonging to the F. So, if I take a empty set, complement is omega that is also belonging and H complement is tail that is also belonging to F and the tail complement is a H that is also belonging to F, omega complement is empty set that is also belonging to F. Therefore, all those uh, three conditions are satisfied by this collection which collection is a subsets of omega. Therefore, this is going to be a, a sigma field or sigma algebra. This is not the only sigma field which satisfies the three conditions. We can have a one more sigma field that is a empty set and the whole set. This also satisfies uh, all the three conditions of uh, sigma field because uh, omega is one of the elements complement of empty set and the whole set is there and the union is also belonging to the collection therefore, this is also sigma field. So, this is called a trivial sigma field for any omega you can always make a sigma field that is uh, consisting of empty set and the whole set that is a trivial sigma field. Even some books they use the notation that is f suffix naught. If it is f suffix naught that is a trivial sigma field. So, not only this is a trivial sigma field this is the smallest sigma field also. Since I use the word smallest sigma field the other one which has a singleton element starting from empty set a singleton element and the whole set. So, this is the largest sigma field. Since it has a two elements omega consisting of two elements if you go for 2 power 2 that is 4. So, number of elements in the this sigma field f has a exactly 4 elements therefore, this is the power set also. this is a power set which is the largest sigma field. In this example, we have a trivial sigma fields one is the smallest one and other one is the largest one that is a power set. In between we are not getting any other sigma field. We are getting only two sigma fields because it has only two elements one is with the smallest other one is the largest. Now, I am going to discuss some more example in that we will end up a non trivial sigma fields other than smallest and the largest. Second example, I would not bother about what is the random experiment directly I give the sample space. So, the sample space consisting of three elements, sample space consisting of three elements. Now, we will go for creating the sigma field. The smallest one always uh, empty set and the whole set. The another sigma field which I can create empty set, I take a singleton element A, B and C together. Therefore, A complement is B and C, B and C complement is A and the union of A, B and C that becomes the whole set. You can verify, you can verify F 1 that is a sigma field because it satisfies all the three conditions of the sigma field. I can go for similarly I can go for another sigma field keeping B separately and A and C together. Similarly, I can go for another sigma field keeping C separately A and B together. That means, I can create two more sigma field of similar kind. I am going for the largest sigma field satisfying all the three conditions that is a empty set, singleton element. any two element a b 
B C and C A and all three elements together. Count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 elements. Number of elements in the sigma field is 3. So, 2 power 3 is 8. So, this is the largest sigma field, nothing but the power set. So, in this example, we have created uh, the trivial sigma fields like uh, the smallest one and the largest one and in between we have created some more sigma fields. I have created one, similarly you can create two more sigma fields. That means, uh, for a non-empty set omega, based on the number of elements, you can always uh, able to create uh, many sigma fields including the trivial sigma fields. And the sigma fields is going to be a play important role in the probability that we are going to discuss in the later part. The first example and the second example we have a finite elements, the omega consisting of finite elements. We can go for creating the sigma field when omega is uncountably many elements. Let us go for third example that is omega is uh, same as uh, the real line. That means, uh, the elements is from minus infinity to plus infinity. That is a collection of uh, e x such that x lies between minus infinity to infinity, real numbers, uncountably many. Omega consisting of uncountably many elements in it. Now, we are uh, going to create the sigma field on omega, the omega consisting of uncountably many elements. Obviously, here also the trivial sigma field is going to be empty set and the whole set. We can go for a non-trivial sigma field f 1 consisting of a empty set, open interval minus infinity to 0, the other element is a closed interval 0, open interval infinity, then the whole set. You can verify, whole set is one of the element and the second condition is a complement of every element is also belonging to the same collection. Complement of empty set is whole set. Complement of minus infinity to 0 that is a 0 to infinity the closed form and com complement of a 0 to infinity that is minus infinity to 0. Complement of a whole set is empty set and uh, if you make a union of uh, any two elements or any three elements or all four elements that is also belonging to f f 1. Therefore, uh, f 1 is also going to be a sigma field. The way I break uh, minus infinity to infinity at 0, one side open interval, other side 0, you can think of uh, any real number between the interval minus infinity to 0, you can partition uh, the whole interval into two pieces at any real point then you can make a two elements, then you will have a many sigma fields. This is the easiest sigma field one can create. By partitioning the interval into three pieces, three sub intervals, then it is going to be little difficult. You have to go for creating a union and the complement of every interval also belonging to f and so on. That is little tedious job, but still you can uh, partition the interval minus infinity to infinity into finite number of sub intervals. Then accordingly you put some more elements, so that all the three conditions are satisfied. Like that you can create many sigma fields, but uh, we are going to have a largest sigma field. We can just visualize what are all the forms of uh, intervals or elements going to be the element of f or the collection of uh, subsets of omega, so that f is going to be a sigma field. In which it is going to be 
elements of uh, it start with the empty set it's with the singleton element a and it is going to be having the element of uh, a to infinity form a can be a real number and uh, it will be of the form uh, a to b b is also a real number and it is going to be of the form minus infinity to a open and it is going to be of the form a closed interval a to infinity and it is going to be of the form a to b open interval both closed closed interval a open interval b here both a and b can take any real number so these are all the all the combinations of different real numbers will land up okay one more element that is omega also so these are all the different forms will form a collection that is going to be the largest sigma field on or over omega where omega is a real line special name for this sigma field that is called borel sigma field this is a borel sigma field on the real line suppose i have a omega which is not the whole real line it is in the sub interval 0 to 1 closed interval then you can always create a f which is a borel set on real line intersection with the 0 to 1 you don't need to have a whatever the borel sigma field you created on the real line suppose your omega is going to be a sub interval between minus infinity to infinity then you can always make a sigma field on omega which is a sub interval of a real line by intersecting that interval with the borel sigma field therefore now we have discussed the how to create the sigma field whenever we have omega having a finite number of elements and uncountably many elements obviously when you have a countably infinite number of elements you can do the similar exercise for creating the sigma field